Thank you, Aubrey, for that warm and energetic introduction. I'd like to welcome you in the traditional Māori language from New Zealand. Now mai, hari mai. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. I see you, I see you, I see you all. Now, as Aubrey mentioned, Ioinise Doa is a difficult name to present. But in Japan, it holds a very special meaning with its people. Ioi means coming together, Nisei means the rising sun, and Doa means harmony. I have the privilege today of sharing our company story with you. But first, I'm going to start with a personal story. When I was at university, I took part in a Young Achievement Program. And that program was to bring a group of students together to start a company, to think of a product, to make it or build it, market it, and of course, sell it. And our product idea was called the Monkey Band. Now, I think we were ahead of our time. You see, the monkey band was made of wetsuit material and it was designed to hold either your money or your keys. You could liken it today to the ones that you see wrapped around your arms holding your mobile phones. So two of the funniest stories is that we didn't have a marketing budget. So you could see me in the shopping centre car parks with my clipboard accosting unsuspecting shoppers to get their views as to whether they would buy a monkey band. Secondly, we fronted Adidas, or for those in America, Adidas. And we convinced them why they needed to buy 500 of these homemade monkey bands and brand them Adidas. So why am I telling you this story? Well, you see, at a young age, I learnt the importance of three things. That is, to have a clear strategy, to understand the business benefits for your company and your customers, and also the importance of having a high energy and driven team to deliver success. So, when I started at Ioi Nisei Doa four years ago, I noticed some things. I noticed that we lacked the kind of strategy in New Zealand that would drive profitable growth. It also didn't have that entrepreneurial spirit that I so dearly love. And we were hindered by these manual processes that for me, added to the dreariness of the everyday. So we set on a path, and we set on a path to transform our business. And not only from a technology standpoint, but also culturally. So what I'm gonna share with you today is what you can achieve when you have those three things, like in the monkey band business, a clear strategy, some sound business benefits, and a high-spirited team. So a little bit about us uh, in terms of um, who we are. So Ioi Nisei Doa is part of a global entity known as MS and AD Insurance Group. We're one of 45 countries around the world. We have about 46 billion US dollars in premium, and we're the eighth largest PNC insurer around the world. Ioi Nisei Doa has a long history of 133 years, but in New Zealand, we've got a very short history of just 22 years. We work with partnerships, and we work within our local communities, and two of the major partnerships are Toyota, world's leading car manufacturer, and Nippon Life Insurance, a life insurance company. 
Ayo Inisei Doa is responsible for the non-life components of insurance. Now coming back to New Zealand, where the general insurance market is valued at $7 billion. That's New Zealand dollars. Now that number might pale into insignificance, particularly for some of you who are here from much larger countries like the US or the UK. But for us, it's all relative with just a population size of 5 million people. Now, some fun facts about New Zealand. We have five times more sheep than we do people. <laughs> That's right, 25 million sheep. We have a flightless bird known as the kiwi, and often New Zealanders are endearingly called kiwis. We're also home to the world's greatest rugby team known as the All Blacks who have won 80% of all their test matches over the last 120 years. But if you're a rugby fan, do not look at the last three months' performance. <laughs> it hasn't been quite so stellar. It's a beautiful country and it's packed with beautiful beaches, the mountains, hot springs and plenty of snow for skiers and boarders. If you're looking at the picture on the bottom right hand side, that is a hot spring, but that one might be a little too warm to dip your toes into. Also home to the Lord of the Rings, which grossed one billion US dollars globally. So when I first started, I asked myself two questions. How big is the market and how big are we? So I already mentioned that the New Zealand market is worth 7 billion New Zealand dollars. And of that, I had just 19 million dollars worth. We also had about 20,000 policies. They were motor vehicle insurance risks. Out of a total market size of 4.3 million vehicles driving on New Zealand roads. I realised we had plenty of opportunity. So we, given this, we wanted to create our strategy. We wanted to create a strategy that would drive some profitable growth. And so we started looking to our external environment. And what we saw were traditional dealerships moving to more like dealerships that were, say, shop fronts with cafes. We also saw these concepts coming alive like embedded insurance with telematics and also driverless vehicles. So after working hard on our strategy, we landed in strong alignment with our head office. We wanted to create shared value and we created shared value by digital experience. It was all about creating exceptional experience for our customers. We wanted to take our traditional insurance products to next level insurance products through digital experience. Something that's passionate to me, I wanted to innovate. We wanted to be innovative and I wanted to bring that entrepreneurial spirit to our organisation. And of course, financial performance. We wanted to create sustainable growth. We were ready. We were ready to deliver on this strategy. But there was one glaringly obvious issue. We had a legacy system and we couldn't scale. We couldn't create digital experiences for our customers and nor were we innovative. We needed the intelligent, intelligent use of technology. Now, some of you may have read the book by Jim Collins called Built to Last. And in that book, it describes what sets visionary companies apart from others. It also has this concept of the BHAG. And the BHAG stands for the big hairy, audacious goal. Now, 
These are powerful mechanisms to stimulate growth and they're supposed to fall well outside our comfort zone and stretch the organisation. So what was our BHAG? Well, our BHAG was to replace every system with a vision of cloud first. Now, for most organisations, just replacing their core insurance system would be a big enough BHAG on its own. But no, we decided to replace eight systems within two and a half years. So, of course, our two major systems being the core insurance system, which we upgraded to the full insurance suite of the Guidewire Cloud, and our document production system to smart communications, we delivered these within 12 months. And we also managed to wedge a couple of the ancillary systems that you see there into it also. I'm exhausted just looking at this list. <laughs> and I can tell you that my team were exhausted at the end of it. But what makes it an even bigger BHAG is that we have a total team size of 35 people, and I still had an operation to run. So like I said, our BHAG was to replace every system with a vision of cloud first. Why cloud first? Well, it was obvious once we understood our business benefits. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it's really important to understand what they are. And we drew up a business case, and whilst many thought we couldn't afford our fancy new systems, it became evident that we could. The benefits that we tied to our projects were flexibility. Now, before I talk about flexibility, I want to point you to the balloon puppy dog in the middle of this icon. So, not only do I find the balloon puppy dog hilarious for this presentation, but it does have a very special meaning to my heart. A number of years ago, I decided to volunteer for a children's hospital. And part of my role with the children's hospital was to bring fun, joy, and laughter to the children's lives. So, I became very good at making these balloon puppy dogs. <laughs> and what surprised me the most was, even in the difficult circumstances that the children faced, how flexible and adaptable that they were, and how much fun and enjoyment they could have in the moment. And so we wanted to find systems that were equally flexible, just like those children. When I think about our system implementation, we had a mandate of adopting the core system. And so what that meant is that we would actually change our business process before we would change the core system. So when I think about adopting the core and I think about cloud first, one of the biggest benefits is that we get to stay on the core roadmap innovation. And we benefit from all of those updates and we manage to take those benefits immediately to our business. When we were in development, in flight of our project, we took an update from one version to the next and it took just five days to deliver. Now six months on in our uh, post go live, we are just about to take our next update. So we get to benefit from all of that added flexibility. And I think, you know, when I think of this, I think of those children and I think about how flexible they were and that's exactly what we want in the system. Next, security or Godzilla. In 2014, in San Francisco, a group of hackers hacked into the temporary road signs used for roadworks. And on it, they wrote, Godzilla attack, turn back. <laughs> now, much to the amusement of the road users, they did ignore it. 
And whilst it's a humorous example of security, I think we all know here why security is so important to our business. We knew that by choosing cloud first, we were being proactive in our security. We now integrate with technologies like AWS or Azure platforms, and what that means is we bring added security. We have things like whitelisting, network threat protection, anti-DDoS protection, and we benefit from a multi-zoned approach to disaster recovery, which means my data is backed up across different geographical zones. Finally, optimization. Now, I'm an ocean swimmer, so I'll paint a picture for you. There's a swimmer. They're 50 metres offshore, they're swimming a kilometre every day, and they're gliding effortlessly through the water. And then there's me. I'm no more than two metres offshore. I can often feel my hand touching the sandy bottom so I know I won't drown. And I can tell you that my stroke is completely inefficient. But if you look at the top competitive swimmers, their stroke is completely efficient. There's no unnecessary splashing or kicking, and their stroke is optimised. Now, we looked for straight through processing and no touch or one touch opportunities at every customer touch point. Our sales are transacted through dealerships, and when they come across into our system, we took a 13 step process down to zero. We also have added efficiencies within our claims process. So, when we look at the claims payments, it's now more automated, which saves minutes off every claim. So when I think about the competitive swimmers and gliding through the water, I think about the fact that we wanted our systems just as optimised as those swimmers. So to articulate these benefits for you, I'm going to share a video with you of my team. And I want you to pay particular attention to Dennis who talks about the quick turnaround times for claims. The API and the tools that come with Guidewire make deploying and integrating with third parties significantly easier than with legacy systems. What Guidewire gives us is the ability to deploy new products, often out of the box, and to be able to deliver those and get a return on that investment significantly faster. The biggest change since integrating with Guidewire would be efficiency itself. We're able to work a lot faster. The process of renewal back then was we'd always have to communicate with customers. Now, with Guidewire involved, we don't need to go through all the manual process. Using the Guidewire system now, the biggest impact for customers is the quick turnaround from lodgement to claim acceptance. It's taken half the time. Now, with a few clicks, I can see where my team is at, which of my team needs support, and which claims we need to progress really quickly. The ability to access that information by a few clicks is massive, is a game changer. New business intake coming in was 13 manual steps. We cut that to zero. I can take about double the business in without growing my policy team at all. Now, just secretly, Dennis also tells me that he loves the fact that all the claims information is on one screen, so he understands exactly where a claim is at, at first glance. So I mentioned four years ago, we were transactionally focused, we had $19 million in premiums, and we had one brand with two products. Dial the clock forward to today, and we have new systems and infrastructure. We've 
doubled in premium and we've got six brands with six products and capacity for even more. So we were focused in terms of our strategy and what that also meant is that we also believed that we could deliver this, but it was incredible that we delivered eight systems in two and a half years. And that doesn't come without one key ingredient, and that is culture. So I mentioned earlier that a high-spirited team is important. And we made eight massive technology changes in two and a half years. But we didn't do it alone. We had technology partners. And it was equally important to us that we chose technology partners that shared that culture and that vision with us. So a fun fact about New Zealand that I didn't share with you earlier. Sir Edmund Hillary was the first person to climb to the top of Mount Everest. Now we all know that the real heroes in this story are the Sherpas. And Sir Edmund Hillary's Sherpa was Tenzing Norgay. Now we had our very own Sherpa. That's right, a company called Tenzing in New Zealand, owned by Tech Mahindra, a global entity. And they were extraordinary in terms of our delivery. Their team worked extremely hard and of course they delivered results because they delivered our upgrade within 12 months. We also had smart communications. Smart communications delivered us our document production system and they were the experts in this. They put into the hands of the business the documents and the production of them, which means now when I start a new brand or a new product, we can do that ourselves. And finally, of course, Guidewire. I knew from my first phone call with Guidewire that our cultures were completely aligned and it's with their drive and their determination that our projects were, were successful. But I still think it's really incredible to know that we had a team of 35 people, and of course, most of them were running my business. And there are three key important components for me that drives culture and drives technology projects, and they are be prepared. It's, in, it's important to be prepared. We spent two years understanding our business requirements because we were looking for a technology system. So we used that time wisely. It's also important to communicate and collaborate across teams. And the reason for that is that there are problems every single day in technology upgrades. And you need a team that's willing to work through those because at the end of it, they need to make decisions. You remember earlier I referred to the book called Built to Last by Jim Collins. Well, there is a second book in that series and it's called Good to Great. It talks to the people strategy and it says, put your best people on your biggest opportunities and not your biggest challenges. Choose your key roles wisely and make sure that they have the grit and the determination to make the project successful. Now, I started today talking about the monkey bands and what was equally important in every business, which is to have a clear strategy, to understand your business benefits and to have a high-spirited team culture. I'm gonna to finish today coming back to our Japanese heritage, where I think that grit and that determination and that high-spirited team culture is articulated in one word. And it's a new word that's espoused by our new president, and that is yoroze. 
Yorose means let's do it together. I know that by choosing the right technology partners, that we will work on all of our future BHAGs together. And as one team, we'll make sure that our business is a success. So I leave you with this one final word. Yorose. <laughs>